Harry Gray. I'm chairman of the board of the Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation. I'm also the Arnold and Beckman Professor of Chemistry at the California Institute of Technology. I'm Jacqueline Dorrance, and I am the former uh, executive director and CEO of the Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation, recently retired and am now a trustee of the Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation. The Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation primarily was founded by Dr. Beckman to support basic scientific research um, in chemistry and the life sciences. And we do that through supporting our five Beckman Institutes and several different programs, including the Beckman Young Investigator Program, Beckman Scholars Program, um, Beckman Postdoc Program, and we have a Beckman Arduros uh, Award in Vision Research, and we're funding a Macular Research Initiative also. Now, Dr. and Mrs. Beckman started their philanthropy uh, some years ago. Uh, actually, their first building was at Caltech, the Beckman Auditorium, in the early 1960s. And they continued to support uh, chemistry and biology and life sciences uh, at Caltech and at the University of Illinois and other places for a period. And for a long time, they uh, thought they would give away all their money in their lifetime, but uh, they decided to form a foundation in the 1970s, the Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation, and became a much more regular uh, donor to places, uh, entertaining proposals. And uh, in the 1980s, uh, they started the philanthropy on a very large scale by uh, funding these Beckman Institutes, these five Beckman Institutes, the one at the, here at the University of Illinois, the one at Caltech, one at the City of Hope, one at Stanford, and one at the University of California, Irvine. These five major institutes the foundation has funded continuously since uh, they were started about 25 years ago. This is roughly the 25th anniversary of the University of Illinois. It's a Beckman Institute. In 1989, Mrs. Beckman passed away. And that's when Ted Brown and I entered the scene in a more direct way. Because Dr. Beckman in 1989 was very distraught over his loss of Mrs. Beckman. And he needed a lot of help at that time. And Ted and I had been advising him informally uh, through uh, our roles as founding directors of the, of the two, of two big Beckman Institutes, one at Caltech, which I founded, and the one here at Illinois, which Ted Brown founded. So we were both very, very close to Arnold Beckman, and he sought our advice at this time, and that's when we started the programs that Jackie has just referred to. The Beckman Young Investigator Program was started uh, really by Ted Brown and myself with the help of a few other people, but we encouraged Dr. Beckman to start that program uh, in the early 90s uh, when he was looking for things to do. Uh, he had so many proposals, he really was uh, confused about what he should be doing. He'd always He'd always ask Mabel for help, his wife of many years, and he and Mabel had made decisions together. And now for the first time, Mabel's gone. And so I think Ted and I filled a role there, filled a void in Dr. Beckman's life after Mabel died. And Ted, of course, was very special during this time because such a wonderful human being, he advised Dr. Beckman on all kinds of matters at that time, helping him through the, through the crisis, really. And we started the Beckman Young Investigators Program in the early 90s. And a few years later, uh, we, with the help of a, a trustee whose name was Don Shields, uh, Ted and I and Don Shields uh, together 
were leaders in starting the, the Beckman Scholars Program, a program for undergraduate researchers that Jackie referred to. And uh, most recently, we've started uh, a postdoc program. Um, a lot of it is the postdoc program is modeled a lot after one that Beckman Institute here at Illinois has had for years. And so, uh, so the foundation, in a nutshell, after Mrs. Beckman's death, the foundation has really concentrated on support of young people young investigators, postdocs, undergraduate researchers in chemistry, biology, and life sciences. That's what we do. And it was Ted Brown's leadership and inspiration in the late 80s and early 90s that helped us really uh, get these programs going. You know, Ted and I had a long relationship with Dr. and Mrs. Beckman. Uh, my wife and I met Dr. and Mrs. Beckman in the late 60s at Caltech. Arnold Beckman was the chairman of the board at Caltech. And he came to one of my talks uh, about the time that I arrived at Caltech. And he and Mrs. Beckman both came to one of my talks. And, and uh, I, I'm not sure Mrs. Beckman understood anything in my talk, but she she liked the way I talked. And she came up afterwards with uh, Arnold Beckman and said, Arnold, uh, this young man, uh, I don't understand anything he said, but I really like the way he said it. <laughs> and, and so we bonded. That was my experience, and from then on, uh, we formed a strong friendship with the Beckmans over the years. Uh, through the time I was chairman of the division at Caltech in chemistry, and I worked on projects with Dr. Beckman at Caltech. Got to know him really well. I think he, he, he trusted me. And uh, that's how I worked my way into the foundation was through lots of projects with Dr. Beckman early on. Um, and then uh, I worked with him to found the Beckman Institute at Caltech. So slowly but surely he asked me for more and more advice, asked me to form a science advisory council in the late 80s and early 90s. And Ted Brown was a member of that. I, I was the first chair of the science advisory council. Uh, Ted was one of the prominent members. When I stepped down as chair, uh, Ted became chair of the Science Advisory Council. And so we, since we both had that experience in leadership in the Science Advisory Council, Dr. Beckman asked us both to join the board. Uh, uh, and so it was a process of working with him over the years, over many years, uh, on projects, uh, advice and so forth, and I think Ted and I both got to the point where Dr. Beckman really trusted us. He trusted us to work with him, and he asked us to join the board, and we did. We joined the board together, and that's the way it worked. It was a long process. It wasn't something that um, happened overnight. Dr. Beckman, I think, liked to really see how people worked and whether they were trustworthy, their advice was any good, whether you'd like to work with them, and so forth. And, I think that and, um, and Ted that's how it started. And yeah. he always had his friends, his trusted friends, on the board. And it, like as Harry mentioned, he worked with them for years before he asked them to serve on his board. And so I think since, since then, we've tried to replicate that model to a degree by working with his trusted friends, inviting them to be on the board. And now that there are as many people that knew Dr. Beckman, we're working with the um, program recipients. So the early recipients of the Beckman Young Investigator Program that we've known, um, we trust them, we know what they're about, we invite them to 
serve on the Scientific Advisory Council, watch them for a period of time. Um, and I think that's what will happen in the future is we'll just continue that model is to make sure that we vet them fairly closely and carefully before we're, they're invited to yeah. serve on the board. Yeah, what Jackie is saying is, uh, is that the Beckman Foundation and all the recipients, and the young people we've supported, it's one very big family. Uh, we feel like a family. Uh, we have an annual symposium where members come back, you know, very loyal people come back. Uh, we've taken our former Beckman Union investigators and put them on the Science Advisory Council. Our Science Advisory Council now is comprised entirely of alums from the Beckman Young Investigator Program. As Jackie said, we can watch them and see how they develop. And then uh, the ones who really are stepping up to the plate and helping us out a lot and knew Dr. Beckman, knew what Dr. Beckman wanted, which is very important. He wanted to support basic research in chemistry, biology, and life sciences, medical work, fundamental research. Once they understand that completely and know what absolutely what Dr. Beckman wanted, uh, then we invite them to become members of the board. And we've just done the first Beckman Young Investigator uh, promotion, if you like, to member of the board. Uh, and we will follow this model, I'm pretty sure, in subsequent years. We will run people in who are part of the family who understand exactly what Dr. Beckman wanted to do. I think it's critical to um, continue to support Dr. Beckman's vision and his vision was to support basic fundamental research in chemistry and the life sciences and we do everything that we can do to ensure that that happens um, and, it, and it starts with the vetting of the board members, the people that serve on our different review panel committees. Um, all the way down to the staff. They, everyone, everyone is supporting Dr. Beckman's vision. And if it's foundation in perpetuity, it needs to be Dr. Beckman's foundation in perpetuity. Yeah, there's two aspects of that uh, support of basic research. The first one is that it's very, very difficult now uh, to uh, agencies, governmental agencies and so forth, to support really fundamental high-risk research because the tendency in the agencies is to support things that have short-term outcomes. Uh, there is more and more pressure to work on things where somebody will ask you, well, when's it going to be ready for commercialization? And, and if the answer isn't, you know, next year or the next two or three years, then uh, the agencies sort of turn off very, very often they turn off and say, no, we need to support more applied. There's always pressure to put more money into more applied research. Dr. Beckman's vision was to support young people who didn't have the clout yet to get, to get a lot of federal support, who were, who were actually engaged in very high risk high risk, but high payoff, potentially high payoff projects. He wanted to invest in these young people who didn't have grants yet, but had enormous promise. That was what he wanted to do after discussions with Ted and me, but we had lots of discussions with Dr. Beckman about this. And he came around to, and you'll see it on his videos, I want to support the young people who don't have the clout yet to get big grants. I want to get them started. I want to support them with and support their ideas. They're not always going to work out, but who is going to support them if the Beckman Foundation doesn't support them? We may lose these people. So slowly but surely, Dr. Beckman decided, I'm going to put my money into young people, period, and basic research, period not applied work, not older people, 
but young people who've got great ideas about doing basic research. That's what we're all about, okay? <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> Isn't that what we're all about, That's Jackie? That's what we're all about. <laughs> we've, we've heard him say it too. I we've heard Dr. Heard Beckman say, say it. You'll see it on his videos. And, and that's why we're so committed to young people. That's why if you look at all of our programs, <clears throat> they're all committed to young people. The ones that aren't, we're probably going to rearrange so they are committed to young people. And Jackie knows what I'm talking about there. That's our vision program. Right. I think we're going to talk about you know, realigning that so that we support the young people who've got a, a shot at doing basic research that's going to make a big difference down the road. Uh, so that's what we're all about. Arnold Beckman. You know, what's interesting about Arnold Beckman and Ted Brown is that they share so many very, very similar traits. So anything that I say about Arnold Beckman, I'm really saying also about Ted Brown. Um, very, very intelligent people, very honest people, high levels of integrity, um, loyal to their family and their friends, very, very humble and modest, kind, kind individuals. Um, they are out of, they were created out of the exact same mold. And I can see why Dr. Beckman felt such a kinship to Ted, because it was like looking in the mirror. It was really very special. Both of them, beautiful people. The world is a better place because of them. I agree. When I think of Ted Brown and Arnold Beckman, I think one word, integrity. Both Ted and Arnold Beckman had absolute integrity in all things they did. You could trust them. You could believe them. Their word was good, no matter what. And they were very much alike in that sense, that here is a person who, when they tell you something, it's absolutely something you can believe and trust stick with. They're not going to go against it. Uh, and they're both very, very kind and, and wonderful human beings. It's a pleasure to work with. Uh, see, I go way back with Ted Brown. I'm an inorganic chemist. Ted was an inorganic chemist. We started our work in inorganic chemistry, you know, in the 60s. Um, and I interacted with Ted a lot during that time. In fact, we, we worked on some of the same compounds. Uh, me at Columbia and Caltech and Ted here at Illinois. Uh, we exchanged, uh, you know, papers and discussions. So I knew Ted very, very well for <clears throat> a long, long time. And then we got into the same interactions with Dr. Beckman. So we could talk about that during the 80s and, um, and got to know each other even better during that period when we were interacting so closely with Dr. Beckman. And uh, then I got to know just how, you know, what a great human being Ted was and is. Um, a guy that whose guidance, who's, who's, you know, advice you could you could really trust. See, I'm a little crazier than Ted. Uh, <clears throat> I can go off in all kinds of directions, making all kinds of silly proposals, which I did on many occasions. And Ted would always bring me back saying, Harry, uh, you should think that through. That's not a very good idea. And Ted was always right. Ted Ted really saved me from making a whole bunch of really bad mistakes. Uh, in my role as a board member of the foundation, like, because he would always, and he did that with all the other board members too. I'm not the only board member who, who had crazy ideas. I think we all had crazy ideas, except for Ted. 
He never had a crazy idea. His ideas were always good. They were always solid. They were always based on good information. And and I you know I remember Ted at board meetings and Jackie does too. We're sitting around there and somebody would come up with some silly idea about something to fund that for the board should fund because it was somebody's pet project which didn't have anything to do with Dr. Beckman's philosophy or what Dr. Beckman wanted to fund. And everybody knew that, but nobody was willing to say it except Ted. Ted would say, now, wait a minute, you guys, that was poor Jack was on the board, a bunch of guys. Wait a minute, you guys, you haven't thought this through. Ask yourselves, what would Dr. Beckman have done here? He wouldn't have done that. That's not something Dr. Beckman would have done. You know that, Jackie. Absolutely true. Ted said that time and time again. Ted, Ted really saved the foundation from making a whole bunch of silly mistakes and funding projects that were way away from anything Dr. Beckman would have funded because they, they weren't fundamental research in chemistry, biology, life sciences, medical research. They weren't in the areas that Dr. Beckman really was dedicated to funding. And Ted was the guy on the board who kept reminding us of that when board members wanted to, say, fund uh, some crazy project off in the desert someplace to do something silly. <clears throat> Ted would always bring us back. That's why he was so valuable as a member of the of the foundation, as a board member of the foundation. He was the heart and soul and the conscience of the foundation. And that's why I'm so indebted to him uh, for what he did to make sure the foundation is really strong today. And the foundation is very, very strong today and committed now, really, all of us committed to what Dr. Beckman wanted. A lot of it's due to Jackie being executive director because Jackie got to know this and I think she was mentored a lot by Ted Brown and and Jackie learned through this process and seeing how Ted worked uh, and recently you know Jackie has been the sort of Ted Brown on our board because she knows exactly she mentored by Ted she knows exactly what Dr. Beckman wanted she know what she knows she knows what Ted would have said at a certain time, and she's brought us back too. So uh, this family has operated in this wonderful way. And Ted being the, the member of the family who knew really what to do at every, every venture, at every time in the foundations thing, Ted came in and told us, hey, this is what we should be doing. This is what Dr. Beckman would have done. Don't do this over here. Do this. And, and he was right every time. Ted's I, think, the best. I think that's right. Ted is the best. He really is. I think that's really right. Ted was Ted. And it was the it foundation. Was the foundation, too, was the, the foundation the is in which very strong that. now because Ted's legacy. You know, when I'm, I'm sitting at all the board meetings now, so is Jackie, and you know, and Ted hasn't been on the board now for how many years, Jackie? Oh gosh, 10. 10 years maybe, he's been retired for some close to 10 years, maybe seven or eight, I've forgotten, but, but we sit there, Jackie and I sit there, and you know, as things come up, we sort of mentally are thinking, what would Ted, what would Ted have done here? And, 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 and we've, we've, We've got the strength now to come forward and saying, you know, shouldn't do this. You know, I think you're right about him mentoring me, which I hadn't really thought of until you said that. Be, um, but well, he mentored yeah, us yeah, both. You're absolutely right. Ted you know, mentored so us both. He mentored me you. because I needed mentoring. I mean, I could have been talked into all kinds of things by by these characters, probably because I you know. It wasn't that I wanted to do something that Dr. Beck would know. It just wasn't thinking straight in some cases. 
Ted was always thinking straight. And he was always very true and loyal to Dr. Beckman's He was pushes. totally loyal. Well, I've been totally loyal, and Jackie's totally loyal, but, you know, Ted was both totally loyal and he has had his head screwed on right. right. That was the difference. <laughs> and uh, we owe him so much. We owe Ted Brown so much. That's why we made this gift here in his honor. We want to honor Ted Brown. We want to have an endowment here at the University of Illinois with Ted Brown's name on it. We owe him. And we and Jackie and I really uh, were, and Jackie really was a leader in making sure we did this endowment in honor of Ted, to recognize really his enormous contributions to the foundation. You know, we had we had some surplus funds, and we really wanted to. It was at a time when we really felt like we hadn't done anything to recognize Ted for everything that he'd done for Dr. Beckman for many, many, many years, what he has done for the foundation and the mentoring that he's done um, for the board members and the staff members. And I just don't think that, I don't know if there are adequate words to explain how much he's given to, to the foundation, Dr. Beckman. Mabel, um, the friendship that they all shared, but he, what he's given to the Beckman Institute here, you know, he set this, he set the stage for the Beckman Institute, and it is today what it is today because of Ted Brown, and how could we repay him in perpetuity, and make Dr. Beckman's vision continue. What better way could we have done that than to recognize Ted Brown with a gift and to link his name with Dr. Beckman's name, which is something that I think that he uh, would very much appreciate. And we thought since they were both so instrumental in where the foundation is today, that we should have, we should honor Arnold Beckman and Ted Brown with the one thing that we really knew they wanted to support, and that's young people. That's why it's a postdoc program, an endowment pro postdoc program, because those are young people who are going out and we can help them get going. We thought having a Beckman Brown postdoctoral fellowship with both Arnold Beckman's name and Ted Brown's name linked together would be the appropriate way to recognize Ted's contributions to the foundation. And we discussed various mechanisms, various ways we might uh, do things, but we finally ended up with the idea that it, it, it should involve the support of young people. And that's why we came around to this endowment for postdoc, kind of special postdoc program here. We thought that Ted would, would be especially interested in, in that as he was over the years on the board. He was always supportive as Dr. Beckman was of young people. So why not put that together as Beckman Brown postdocs? So these young people will all will carry both names forward the rest of their lives and their and, careers. And also to have um, the lecture series, the annual lecture series, series so that neither one of them will ever be forgotten. You know, the, yeah. we, right. to celebrate Dr. Beckman, Ted Brown, and all of the postdocs, you know, current and in the future. Yeah, a I better think, way to, yeah, I, to, to I, talk about I think about it was probably lecture. your idea to have the lecture series. I might have been. Somebody had that idea. I, I, I can't take credit for that. I was zeroing in on the support of young people and postdocs, but then I think... Jackie and other members of the board, so, you know, the way to really glue this in and, and make sure there's an annual event celebrating Ted Brown as a, as a lectureship. And so when I heard that, it was clear that was the way to go. <laughs> I mean, because there'll be an annual event where everybody can come and, and 
you can show show whatever's left of this video at the front. <laughs> Might make about 30 seconds in the beginning with all the stuff you've got here. That's great. Now that I know that they're going to show me and Jackie, I'm all for this <laughs> uh, annual. I'm all for this annual lectureship. <laughs> this is a wonderful we'll, idea. We'll come back 30 years. This is a wonderful idea. Are those people? Fantastic <laughs> idea. But that's how we sort we sort of talked about how we could honor Ted. We had lots of discussions of it and discussions with the Chancellor uh, here. Uh, and uh, there were all kinds of ideas. There were ideas that came from Illinois, but in the end we came up with our own idea of what we thought would be appropriate for Ted, and that's uh, support of young people and, and connecting his name forever with Arnold Beckman's name. In 2015, the Arnold and Mabel Beckman Foundation um, decided to support the Ted Brown Arnold Beckman Postdoc Fellowship Program at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, the Beckman Institute, and it will be um, providing funding in perpetuity for postdocs in honor of Dr. Beckman and his relationship with Ted Brown. And it will also um, involve a annual lecture series that honors those that have been recipients of the award, but also recognizes Dr. Beckman and Ted Brown. I, I, I can't improve on that. Oh. Okay, <laughs> wow. So Arnold Beckman always was interested in in breaking down barriers between fields. He always thought that, you know, in biology, people would do much better if they had chemistry backgrounds and knew lots of chemistry. And he felt that there wasn't really a border between chemistry and biology and even in going into engineering so uh, and physics. So he felt that, uh, Arnold Beckman always felt that if you could have an institute that would break down these barriers between chemistry and biology and engineering and physics and other disciplines that would promote uh, basic research uh, for the future that would be much more impactful than just narrow research in any one of the disciplinary areas. And so the feeling was that, uh, particularly because of development of technology, that's driving science, driving advances in chemistry and biology, and lots of that's coming from engineering and physics, uh, that it would be good to have interdisciplinary activities where engineers and chemists and biologists could all work together, uh, building new instruments, and then an engineer could build an instrument, would know what to do with it. A biologist would know what to do with it. And so if you could get them together, collaborating, you could move much faster in basic research than you could otherwise. It was Dr. Beckman's vision. It was also Ted Brown's vision. And so when they got together to talk about it, the uh, natural thing to do would be to start an institute at the University of Illinois to promote inter interdisciplinary work so that engineers and chemists and biologists could all get together, work together, to push forward the uh, frontiers uh, faster than you could if you were just a chemist in a little lab working with test tubes and Bunsen burners. Uh, there's a lot more to chemistry and biology now than test tubes and Bunsen burners and little plates and so forth. And so that's the way the idea was born to have a very big time interdisciplinary institute at the University of Illinois, and that's the Beckman Institute here, and it's worked out great because all kinds of interdisciplinary work goes on here. Lots of engineers working on problems with chemists and biologists, and it's worked out to be just a fantastic place to promote interdisciplinary work, and it's shown the world, actually, that you can do more working together. Chemists can do more and biologists can do more working together with engineers and physicists than they can do in their little labs uh, lighting their Bunsen burners. 
and putting their little test tubes on top. And uh, the world is bigger than that. Ted Brown and Arnold Beckman had that vision together. And they built this place and it's been enormously successful in showing the world what you can do uh, with interdisciplinary science and engineering. I think when you look back um, 25 years ago, the idea of interdisciplinary research was rather unique. It's quite common now, but, but these two men, Dr. Beckman and Dr. Brown, they had this vision of, you know, you can accomplish so much more by working together than working separately. And they built this building with this unique bridge that brings all of the disciplines together. And I think that it's been replicated all over the world now, but it really started here and it started with that relationship between Ted Brown and Dr. Beckman sitting around a conference room table, I would imagine, and just, you know, saying, of course, of course you can work, you'll have much more success um, by working with, every, with other disciplines than you would. Along. Yeah, if you think back 25 years, uh, chemistry and biology were still working with, uh, you know, uh, in individual labs, individual investigators and labs pretty much, whereas other disciplines, physics and astronomy, for example, have working with big instruments, big telescopes, big groups, and I think it dawned on Ted Brown and Arnold Beckman and some others that it was time for chemistry and biology to break out of this little individual investigator, highly focused mode into a mode where they would make use of big instruments, technology, and really get, invite engineers in and applied physicists uh, who were building more and more powerful analytical instruments. And it made sense to Dr. Beckman because that's what he was all about. He was all about developing analytical instrumentation for the world. And so it was a natural for him to say, you know, as chemists and biologists, they ought to start using much bigger and more powerful instruments. That means connecting with engineers who can build these things and physicists and so forth. So that was a natural to to build an interdisciplinary thing where you could take advantage of the technology developments coming out of engineering and marry them with all the bright ideas and creative things that chemists and biologists wanted to do. That was then the Beckman Institute was born out of those discussions between Ted Brown and Arnold Beckman. But that's what did it. It, cha it changed the course of chemistry and biology from a small time, highly focused individual investigator science or sciences to a highly interdisciplinary, big technology driven sciences, which has changed the whole landscape in terms of biomedical research, uh, energy research, environmental research, all the big ticket items now have benefited from this move towards interdisciplinary work and getting engineers, and biologists and physicists and chemists to work together. And that happened here at the Beckman Institute. But that's true. What I just said is true. It's absolutely true. What I said is how it started and all the discussions and the chemists and biologists <coughs> broken out of this little individual investigator mode into playing in a much bigger ball game. And so, we're doing that even with our programs now. Yeah, right? we do that with our programs. Well, we support the, the, the young investigators. We support are ones who've got great ideas to to break out of individual things and, and really get into interdisciplinary work. So it's a it's the theme of the foundation. The Beckman Institute of Illinois it's, reflects the whole theme of the foundation. I was here at the dedication. I, I I've been here. I was, here, I, I was here. I was here. I was here at everything in the beginning. I was here at the big parties. I was here when the wonderful gal at the big dinner here at the dedication. This wonderful gal was carrying this big tray of desserts, and she tripped and dropped it. Oh, no. 
<laughs> she, well, I felt my wife and I felt so sorry for this poor oh. gal. She was mortified. The starts off. We'll never forget that part of the dedication. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I've been. I see. I worked with Dr. Beckman since 1967, and so uh, I've I've been in for a long time, and I've and I've known Ted Brown. I've known Ted Brown for over 50 years. So, you're getting the word here. I was surprised of them because Arnold would always come to me and, and say, well, what do you think of this guy, Ted Brown? Or, you know, we're... Uh, and I talked to Ted about it and I knew what Ted was doing. I was never in any thing where we were all three together talking about the Illinois one. That Ted did all that himself with Dr. Beckman. But I got the word both from Ted and from Dr. Beckman how the things were going and when they were going to do it and what they were doing. So yeah, I was part of the conversation all through it and I knew where it was going and I was very supportive because I thought this was a fantastic investment for Dr. Beckman. I think it had happened at an Illinois football game when the, the president of University of Illinois invited Arnold and Mabel to sit in the stands at a football game. And I think, I think the deal might have been closed at some some event like that. <laughs> but Ted will remember better than I when the deal was really closed. I can remember when I closed the deal at the Beckman Institute at Caltech, uh, and uh, because it. With Dr. Beckman, you have to understand it's a long discussion. He doesn't take your first idea because he wants to think about it. And so you can, I'm sure Ted and Dr. Beckman went back and forth on ideas for, my guess is a couple of years during this period because that's the way Dr. Beckman worked. He wanted to make sure he understood what was involved here. He wanted to make sure that the institution was committed, that everybody was committed to his dream and his passion, what he wanted to do. So he didn't make snap decisions. He made very carefully considered decisions. So my guess is it was a more of a process than a real thing that clicked at one point. It was Ted kept meeting with him and going back and forth and giving him plans. And finally, Dr. Beckman, I guess, has looked at it finally and says, Ted, I like this idea now. We're going to go ahead. Because that's the way. Yes, exactly. That's certainly the way, the way it works. worked with me. You know? I, I would be willing to bet you that's the way it worked with Ted. Absolutely. I think it's what they would want. It's the legacy now is a foundation that's very, very strong, that's committed to supporting basic research, that's committed to supporting young people, uh, that hasn't veered from the course that Dr. Beckman set. And Ted Brown was the guy who steered the ship at a very critical time when we could have gotten off course. We didn't get off course, and we didn't because Ted Brown wouldn't let us get off course. He kept us on the straight and narrow towards support of basic research, fundamental research, and support of young people. And that is Ted Brown's legacy. It's Dr. Beckman's legacy. It's a legacy that's wonderful for these two fantastic individuals, and it's a legacy that will live forever. I think that the legacy of Dr. Beckman and the legacy of Ted Brown, um, it begins, it began many, many years ago with each one of them and how they mentored their colleagues and their friends. And they talk, and, and both of them were extremely thoughtful, soft-spoken individuals, very patient, very deliberate, um, did not make snap decisions, as Harry mentioned. But they, they taught people that that was the appropriate way. And I think that by doing so, um, you really did learn what was important and why it was important. And... They, I think that just perpetuates itself. I know it's perpetuated itself with the foundation. I mean, every 
every board member understands. And we're quite a ways from when Dr. Beckman founded the foundation. Um, all of these years later, we've, we've, we've nurtured, Harry and I have nurtured the board members and talked to them you know, nonstop about Dr. Beckman, Dr. Beckman's vision. We have the exhibits, things that will remind people in the future who Dr. Beckman was, who Ted Brown is, and what they stand for, what was important to them. And I think part of the lecture series is part of the reason that it's so important to have that type of um, event on an annual basis to keep fresh in everyone's mind what these two individuals stood for. We have the annual symposium at the Beckman Foundation, and we always show a video of Dr. Beckman and what his values were and what was really important to him and why. And I think that is what is going to be, um, you know, what the foundation will stand for forever if we continue that model. And I think that both Dr. Beckman and Ted Brown are going to be very, very, very proud of both of these organizations for a long time to come if we continue that.